I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage, and I am the technical chairperson for the Southern California region of the Rolls-Royce Owners Club. And today we're going to cover resealing a Turbo 400 transmission uh, once it's out. Here's the Turbo 400 transmission used on uh, silver shadows through the silver spirits and spurs, corniches included. Uh, this one in particular is out of an 86 corniche. It's a General Motors transmission, bulletproof, excellent transmission, three-speed, automatic, non-electronic. What we're going to do here is we're going to put new seals on the outside and put a new filter in it. Uh, the reason it's out is we want to do the seal at the front of the transmission. Now this one shows some telltale signs of engine oil leaks. You see it. It's kind of neat. Uh, all those black fluids come down here, but it would leave puddles of red fluid, which is not the engine oil. Uh, and we are addressing also on this same car the uh, engine oil leaks. Up front here you have the torque converter. This is what bolts to the flywheel, which turns with the crankshaft. This is basically an automatic clutch. Uh, it loses a certain percentage of uh, horsepower, but it's very uh, pretty, pretty efficient, not the most efficient. This thing, when the car is running, is full of transmission fluid. And the transmission, if you look at it, it's not really full. The dipstick comes in the side of the pan, but when it's running, the fluid doesn't come really much above here. All that fluid, this holds about, I think, usually 10, 11 quarts, is filled up in here. So when a car sits, this fluid level in here slowly drains back and then into the transmission and raises up. That's why you'll get leaks out of this little connector here higher areas on the transmission. Also, it'll come out of the front. Uh, a lot of people will say, well, I drive the car every day, I don't see any leaks, but then I parked it for three weeks, came back, and there's a huge puddle. What's happened is one of these higher seals or gaskets has leaked out because the torque converter has drained back. This is a messy job, that's why I have this big drain bucket and tray, and I have a professional tool here, this is a transmission jack, so I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to nose this down so that I don't dump as quite as much, but there's going to be a lot of fluid in there still. You see that there. Does that jack make it so that you can do it yourself? Do you need help taking that out of the car? Or it's really hard to undo the bolts and, and lift this thing down with one hand. It's about, I would say, 100 pounds at least, 150. You look at this fluid. When it's brand new, it's, it's almost a clear pink red color. It's very clear. This is really, you can see it's really dark. And it will have a distinctive smell. It's a burnt smell. You've smelled this. Yeah. Anybody want to yeah. smell this? It smells, it smells wrong, doesn't mm. it? Almost rancid. Something. Yeah, this is mineral oil, so it, it should have almost, it'll have a slight smell. You want to smell it? It smells kind of burnt. Thing. That means it hasn't been serviced very often. Here's the gaskets we're going to put on, but this is a filter that goes in it. It's not much of a filter, but I recommend at least every two years you change this. I think that's what Rolls-Royce recommends on the two-year service you do it. Um, there's actually a piece of paper in here you can't see. This lays in the bottom of the pan and it sucks the fluid through here and then cleans it. Uh, modern transmissions, a lot of them, they do not have any service intervals. They don't want you to service them because they want them to break so they can sell you a new car because it would be so expensive. Um, that's my theory. But fortunately on these cars you can service it. It's not that hard to pull the pan, change the filter, put you know at least another five quarts in there. It's hard to get all the fluid out. Watch this. You thought I pretty much drained it out. You'll get more. What happens is there's a bunch of fluid in here and <laughs> it's impossible to get out. What I do is I siphon it out. Now I've got this, this is a brake bleeder, professional brake bleeder. It works off a vacuum that you hook to air. Vacuum. And what? Hmm? Vacula. Yeah, it's a vacula. It's a count vacula. Um, so is this. This is a vacula blower gun. What I'm going to do is I'm going to siphon it out, but rather than stick my mouth on this nasty old hose and sucking, I'm going to just stick this tube in here to get fluid in here. Now watch this. Just start drawing it out. Now once I got that tube full, I can pull it out, move my bucket over, and it'll 
just start draining. Now this is going to be the best you can do to get all the fluid out, is to, to slowly siphon it out. Um, the Silver Cloud, I love those. They have a two-piece tor uh, torque converter, but it has a drain plug. So you can drain the torque converter, change the filter, or clean the filter, and, and uh, service it, see how it's dripping. It's just going to keep, it'll probably take good four or five hours for it to all drain out. It's, it's, pretty, it's probably, if you look in here, the level's up to here. So it's about half full still, even though I could turn it like this and it wouldn't all come out. There's where the torque converter goes in. This is called the front pump. And you've got a, a seal up here that seals against that shaft coming out of there. And then on the outside, this is the front pump. Uh, you have a gasket and an O-ring that goes around the outside. And generally what leaks is this O-ring gets dried, dried out and it just shrinks a bit. So you'll have a little gap here so that when your car sits for that period of time, it'll start leaking out down here. Sometimes the seal will blow because there is pressure there. I think maximum is about 100 pounds, 120, something like that. Uh, and that will be an in a hurry and when the car is running, it'll just be dripping. This will not show up until the car sets for a while. So this, this seal we have to change, we have to pull the front pump, and we have to change the gasket and the O-ring. Um, the seal, they make pullers. This is, a, this is one that you, you, you hook in, like that, and then you use a hammer. These aren't too successful for this seal for me usually. I just wanted to show you guys. There's a cute little baby seal, which is on the same principle. A little puller that you hit with a hammer like that. Sometimes, this is another kind of seal puller, which is somewhat effective sometimes. You gotta be careful when you take this that you don't damage anything. But on these, the thing that always works for me is first I have to get the seal to move. Now the seal, this is the seal right here, okay? And you see it's got a little lip. So this, this red coating on here is like a sealer. If you ever put a, this is called a lip seal. Uh, if you ever put a lip seal in something on a car and there's no colored coating on there, you always want to put a thin uh, bead of silicone or some other kind of sealer because the metal to metal will not seal properly generally. What I usually do is I usually, before I take this apart, I found that it's a lot easier to hammer and chisel on this big piece of metal than to something that's on the bench and I'm trying to hold it. So I'll try to... You can see I'll fold up that... And what you do then is you, you change the shape of it so sometimes it'll come out easier. There you go. So now that's 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 all. There are six bolts on this. Some of these turbo 400s I think have seven. I think it's the earlier ones. General Motors is pretty smart usually. They were thinking when they designed this, they said, how are they going to get this off? Right? Against aluminum casing and this cast iron thing. So they made two of these holes in here, threaded on the inside. And, uh, so it's a 3 8 course, that's a little washer. 3 8 course. that this, this particular slide, this is called a slide hammer, screws right in. <laughs> you can buy them at Harbor Freight, you can buy, the, they have kits and all kinds yeah. of stuff. These are pretty handy tools. Yeah. So here we go. Now, 
the center shaft is going to stay in place. So what is it? So normally it stays behind. So we pulled out a little more than normal. So I'm going to lay this on the bench real quick here. That's how it's supposed to be. So this is your front clutch pack. We're going to put it back in. Sorry, I just discovered something. It's not good. There's a little piece of metal in that hole. Oh, I hate finding stuff like that. That almost looks like a piece of a sprag or a piece of a bushing. Transmission worked great, by the way. So I'm not going to freak the guy out at this point. Um, the transmission. Oh, there must be a check. Oh, I think there's a check. Oh, that's what it is. It's fine. So this right here fits into a bunch of clutches. If you want to take a look in there, it's kind of interesting. There's the second clutch pack. See all those little ears in there? Those are all individual clutch plates, which are flat pieces of metal with a um, friction material on them. And sandwiched between those are steel plates that have the same kind of notches fitting into the outside. So that when this applies a clutch, when it's changing gears, it's actually squeezing all those plates together and using a different set of gears in the side of the transmission. There are gears in there, planetary and sun and all that kind of stuff. This was one of the best transmissions, I think. What do you think, Paul? I think so, which is why they used it. Now, the problem, here's what we're going to run into. This is, this is one of the challenges. If you look at all those, see how all those, those, those slots are lined up? I light in there. There we go. Now, what happened? Oh, shoot. <laughs> so now what I got to do is I got to get these all line up again and slide it all the way back. Not most of the way back, but all the way back. So it's a lot. Turn a little push, turn a little push. There. We've done this before. Yeah. Huh? The last minute. There we go. See, there's another. There's another. Ah, that's the sound you want to hear. Clunk. Okay. So here we go. 